everyone, welcome to another movie review. I'm the Bulk and today we're having a look at Annabelle Creation. The film is directed by David F. Sandberg and follows a group of orphans and their nun guardian um, who go to live at the house of the Mullins, um, the, um, the father of which is um, a famous doll maker, and, but sadly the family lost their daughter tragically in an accident years prior and has since lived a very isolated life, um, very, very sheltered life. Now the girls go around exploring the house and until one of them, who is afflicted with polio, um, comes across the, 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 da the dead daughter's bedroom, for which she's told she's not allowed to go into, but, apart, but following doing that strangely that night, she unleashes the the evil of the Annabelle doll, and thus we are given um, this terror that is set upon them. So I think I need to get out of the way. As many people know, the Conjuring universe um, has been very varied. The Conjuring one and two are absolutely fantastic horror films, um, some of the best out there to date. And Annabelle, the spin-off, was a massive part of horseshit. So I uh, said so a lot of people were probably very hesitant to support this film because the first one was very crap. However, the first one did make a lot of money, so this shouldn't be a surprise. So does this one re um, do anything better than the first one? Is this one as good as the Conjuring films? Well, to be honest, it improves upon the first Annabelle Fu film in every single imaginable way. First of all, let's talk about the direction, which I feel is one of the big standout things. So David F. Sandberg's um, sort of first film came out last year. It was um, Lights Out, a superb little horror film. And so he had a very um, specific talent for the genre. And the, again, his talent is showed off here. He has a very good grasp on the story, on the tone, on the characters. He knows how to plot out sequences and knows what to show his audience, knows the restraint that you need and just knows how to give it a particular artistic flair to it which I felt the first Annabelle was missing and this one it definitely you, you get this flair, you get this sense that this is a proper project and not just some god-awful um, like uh, studio thing, it's actually a proper project and you feel it and I feel that with him guiding the film it, um, you can see um, his influences on it um, another big, one of the big things that shocked me was um, how bloody amazing the um, the set design was. They recreated, they built this entire house for it, and every little detail was manufactured for the film. And it is absolutely spectacular to look at. The sets are so detailed, they feel so lived in, they feel so real, and so um, sort of. I don't know what the quite word is. There's just something about them that you sort of... It gives the feeling a more authentic... The film a more authentic feel to it. Which I think um, it needs. Um, and it sort of has this sort of dirt... dirt sort of dirt and filth quality to it slightly. By um, sort of grounding the film ever so slightly. And I feel it improves your experience of it. It definitely puts you into like the mindset of the film. It, like is approved upon by the set design. The story as well, I felt, is very um, good here. With um, a prequel of a prequel, you sort of have problems that are you over-explaining, and while well, it may feel that they are over, like this is a bit of an explanation, I feel that they actually made a decent story out of it. It's a very tidy story, very smooth, very clear and easy to follow, and it's why it is a bit conventional. It's very um, engaging to watch. It's very easy to watch. Um... I feel it could have they could have it could have got a lot worse with it really and I feel altogether it just provides a very um decent narrative for this and it, and also is a much more cleaner narrative and more, with more going on in it than there was in the first Annabelle. In terms of tone I think the tone is a lot better than the first one as well because with these with horror films you need to have this sort of this just generally unsettled tone, maybe not deeply unsettling or deeply um, sickening or sort of throughout, but just just have this tone that when you're watching, even when people are happy and all right, that there's something going to go wrong. This feeling that you just can't be at ease, you're uneased with yourself, that you just can't settle properly. And the film does a good job of capturing that through a mixture of um, the visual style and music and acting. And I feel it works quite well for it. And I think. Um, it fits in better with the Conjuring universe that way, and 
all together it mean it makes so where you're just watching ordinary conversation scenes you sat there and you're still feeling a tiny bit on edge um acting is another huge 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 um strength for this film especially from the younger actors now with younger actors the um, they have the sort of problem that um, sometimes they can like not be the best, especially working with children. You have, you have that problem, and especially in horror, you have that problem. Children being a bit grating, but you get very strong performances from all the kids in it, and you feel for them, um, especially for the two main children, um, Linda, played by Lulu Wilson, and um, the the poor child Polio, um, play, um, Janice, played by um, Talifa Bateman, I believe her name is, Talifa Bateman, and um, basically they provide, they are the core of the film, they are the, sort of the emotional core of the film. You feel a bond between them, you feel actual chemistry between them, and you feel the vulnerability of um, Janice, Janice because she's in a, net, in a leg brace, and you feel th like her insecurity about it, and her isolation, and you feel the optimism of Linda, because Linda's trying to like be a good friend, and she's also um, trying to get used to this new setting, um, and I feel they both provide very strong performances, especially Lulu Wilson, who plays Lin Linda. If you don't I don't know she was in um, Orig Ouija Origin of Evil last year, which was also a surprisingly good prequel to a crap film, and she was really good in it. She was a standout in it, and she's a standout here again, and I feel she's got a very good career going for her. And in general, the performances from everybody has been absolutely fantastic in this film. Um, moving on to the thing you obviously want to know more about, the scares. Is this film scary? Is this film, um, uns like, does it provide what you come for in a horror film? And yes, it does. It absolutely does. It 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 is a very unsettling, disturbing movie with um very well done horror sequences. There's something about the way that even like sequences that aren't overly extravagant or so forth, like that sort of subtle thing. There's little things they use to make it be those sequences better, like um certain sound effects or music or color choices um he knows and um, the director um, has shown restraint in some areas not showing you so much and provides a variety of scares now of course when your main like sort of set like central thing is a doll that doesn't move and has never been seen to move you sort of have that problem of what you do to make scares well you could have and the thing is they have the added boat they had the advantage of it is that the doll sort of like a like um, a conduit for this evil so you can have things appear around her around the doll and around other people which I think works so you have a variety of other um, let's say you have a, other possessed objects and other sort of apparitions and so forth which add to the terror and the sequences does work there are it's surprise there are there's a few that linger with you um, for just the, the effect that they have um, and it genuinely does shock. There are jump scares, but um, and in the beginning there um, there are a few problems with them. But most of the jump scares are well done. The jump scares are um, sort of well placed, and there's actual build up to it, a proper build up. It's not just jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. It's actually a build up, and it, it they are properly set up, and there is a good payoff, so you don't have to deal with that um, problem. And again, the film is just very unsettling to watch. In terms of moving on, because um, the final positive thing we we'll say is because this film is set in a big um, cinematic universe with other films planned for the main series plus other spin-offs, you have that problem of what um, of sort of being um, connected, showing to be in that universe but still being your own thing. And I feel that this film surprisingly is one of the best examples of how to do a shared universe film I've ever seen because the references to other. Um, sort of other um, films and other events to come are so 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 subtle and so well placed that it works it works in the film's favor now because this film is set um, a good 60 odd years before the conjuring films you have that um, advantage that you you don't have to directly reference that but in terms of like setting up other spin-offs particularly the nun which is the next one coming up based off the demon nun from the conjuring 2 they they have so so subtle so sequences one in during the film which was it took me by surprise I didn't expect them to do it they did it and it was so it was a very well done thing and it sets up this and um, the spin-off quite well and also they have um 
a very good after the credit scene rolling around the nun setting that up as well so do stay after the credits are two after credit scenes please do stay for both they are both quite good um and other little references as well like if you if you notice what certain the certain books and certain drawings and so forth you may notice a few little references here and there and also the ending which ties directly into the first annabelle film also clears it up very well it connects very well and sort of it just it just works i think no matter what you think of the first film the film this film acknowledges the first film and is aware of the first film and connects very well and allows there to be one streamless story between the two and also includes a very very nice reference to the real life annabelle because annabelle is based off um the case a stud um, a case of the um, the warrens um paranormal investigators and is actually based off a real thing it's based off a real doll and they have a very nice little reference to that in terms of what's wrong with this film, um, the first thing that's wrong with it is, I would say, it, it does get cheesy at times and laugh out loud funny sometimes. And not often, very infrequently, very, very infrequently, it's only about once or twice, maybe three times, that I found myself chuckling slightly because of certain shots, like let's say a certain a close-up uh, mixed with a facial expression that the person's pulling, mixed with the music of the background, sort of made it un accidentally humorous but there's one in particular one scare about halfway through um that it's just a, it's 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 a mixture of everything really it's a mixture of the shot of the music of the um of the voice that they use for the line that said of the makeup on the face which is makeup if you think it's cgi no it is makeup and it it's it's just it doesn't ruin it for me, but it's just funny. I think I find it funny, and if anything, it adds to a char the charm of the film, but I know it will take some people at the moment. Um, another bit of a negative I have to say about it is sort of... It's sort of the... the I mean, it's slow, and I know in horror films you need a slow burn, and I get it, and all that, and I have no problems with that at all, but I know some people may have a problem that it is a bit slow for the first about half. Um, but I thought it has a decent amount of tension, so it's sort of... It, it sort of evens itself out, um, and also the only little, the last thing that I have wrong with it is more of a nitpick, and that's more the ending is a bit um, because because it has to connect to the first film, and because the first film was such this was this utter piece of crap, it sort of you feel a bit bad for the film having to connect to it, but it does, and it sort of does it. But I kind of felt there was a moment, there was like sort of there was a place that you could see was like the ending of this story. That they could have just left it there, but they didn't. Or they could have had, like, they could have left it at another place. They could have had um, it go up to a certain point in the connection to the first film and then leave it there. But no, they went further with it. And I'd rather them not gone all the way, but they did. So it's me sort of ends up that way. But no, overall, I found it, um, Annabelle Creation to be a perfectly fun little horror film. It's, it makes up for the mistakes of Annabelle. It sets this um, course right and helps to heal the wounds after the mistake of the first film. It also makes me very interested in the other films in this series, um, especially The Nun, and also interested in the direction they're going to go in it. It's an entertaining horror film. It can scare you. and it, or At the very least, it'll be something fun to watch with a few friends. So for that reason, I'm going to give the film a 7 out of 10. So, thank you for watching. What did you think of Annabelle Creation? Have you seen it? Have you, you seen the first Annabelle? What do you think of it? What other creatures from the Conjuring universe would you like to see get a spin-off? Please let me know down below. And while you do it down there, give that like and subscribe button a little tickle, and I'll be seeing you next time. Goodbye.